Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Art of MMA. This is episode number two. I am blessed to be joined by the same usual cast of characters back again. I got Sergio De Silva and Brandon Catino. Uh, we're going to talk about UFC 253. We're also going to jump in and talk a little bit about Diego Sanchez, his uh, past, his present, maybe his future. Uh, we'll see about that. And then we'll talk a little bit about this week's upcoming cards. Bellator's got a special event on Thursday. UFC's got their usual Saturday with Holly Holm. So we'll talk about all that stuff and more. First, I just want to invite everybody to like and subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel and our videos. Those two little clicks go a long way to helping sponsors find our show. I'm not going to sit there and beg for money or any of the other stuff that some people do, but I definitely would appreciate it if you guys could give us a like and subscribe. But now that that's out of the way, no more long intros. We can get straight to the action. So let me introduce the people I got joining me today. First up, Sergio the Savage De Silva. Sergio, how you doing? What's up, Mike? How are you, brother? Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be on the show again. Always, Brandon, bro. Brandon, what's happening, my man? Yeah, man. <laughs> As he kicked it over, uh, we also got Brandon, the mechanic, Catino. Brandon, what's going on? Hey, man. It's good to be back. Second, second show, man. I'm all about it. Yeah. As Major League says, one, one more, and that's called a winning streak, right? There you go. <laughs> so hopefully we'll keep that going, keep it fresh. Um, and as we go on, we'll get some really cool guests in and out of here. Um, but I'm hoping to keep this main cast of characters. I uh, think we got pretty good chemistry and try to keep this going. So first and foremost, let's kick it right to the action. Um, UFC 253 this last weekend. The undercard was pretty cool. Uh, but obviously everybody wants to talk about the two main events, the co-main event and the main event. I'm actually going to start with you, Brandon, this week, because I feel like this is right down your alley. Uh, this was a striking, not any grappling whatsoever in either fight. Uh, why don't we start with the main event, uh, Adesanya and Costa. Tell me what you thought. Man, striking clinic. That's all I got to say. Like like we talked about last week, man, there are levels, and then there are, uh, there are just levels to this game. And is he, is he just – he just put Costa on. He, he told them, like – it's like one of those things, man, like, you know, everybody, everybody thought like, oh, like even, even I did too for a hot second, like after we were talking last week, but then I started to think about it. And then like, cause I told you last week, like my heart was saying Izzy, but my head was saying Costa. But then like, after we got off, I just started thinking about it some more. Then I think I was watching like, uh, you know, the countdown show, I was watching the embedded and I was just like, man, you know yeah, we what? All kind of flip -flop last week. I, I was, I, I was just, I was just, man, you know what, Izzy, he's taking it. He's taking it. You know, and it was just, man, like, you saw, like, the fight started. Costa was basically like, yo, well, yo, well, Romero, man, he wasn't moving. He was standing there. He and honestly like, looked scared. Yeah, you know, and then, and then I was doing, then like, then like what Izzy, Izzy was saying in his post show, like, 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 like Izzy said, he was like, yo, everybody that Costa fought was just punching bags. They would just stand there. Izzy's like, nah, man, I'm going to move on you. And that's what he did. He would hit and move, hit and move. And that's mm -hmm. actually what he did. And then he stayed in, he stayed in his kicking range. Got those kicks, tore up that leg, and then when it was time to put the lights out in the second round, he did. Before I add to that, Sergio, what do you think? I think that you know I wanted, I wanted a good fight, which you know unfortunately we didn't get. Not I think we got it was a one-sided fight. Um, a couple of things that stood out to me the most, and I, I've been telling a lot of people who asked me what I thought about the fight, and you know I'm going to tell you guys now is that fact that I think that there's something called you know a moment being too big for someone. I think that's what happened with Costa. I think he's way better than what he showed. If you're a first time uh, fan watching him for the first time, watching that main event, you're, you're, you're going to say that guy sucks. And I don't think that's the story. I think Costa is a very talented fighter. Is the reason he was undefeated, not only in his entire, not only in the UFC, but his entire career. I think that there's some guys that when the lights shine, they shine even brighter. You know, when it gets darker, the stars are brighter. And I think that's something that Izzy is showing with every fight. I think that's something Conor McGregor has, right? Their best performance is when, like, all the lights are on. And I think that Costa showed that he's too small for that moment, meaning not not literally, but meaning when the when the pressure came on, I think he kind of faded a little bit. He was very hesitant. I know it's a lot easier said than done. I think we all know that Izzy's the more technical striker, but I'd like to see Costa be more aggressive. I'd like to see him be more physical moving I'm, forward i'm curious about a couple things about that fight so from the non-expert opinion i mean obviously sergio you're much better at grappling brandy you're much better at striking from watching it costa's a, a top level black belt in jiu-jitsu and yet and he constantly during the press conferences made fun of izzy's blue belt right and there was a moment 
I know a lot of it was theatrics and a lot of it, you know, was pretending to be Yoel Romero and, and Costa talking shit. And I don't know if he was trying to get Izzy off his game. I don't know if he was trying to maybe stretch it into the later rounds so he didn't come out fast like he normally does. But he honestly looked scared to me when he, and maybe it was the first few leg strikes that kind of just changed his whole game plan. Because, you know, like Mike Tyson says, until you get punched in the mouth, you know, and then the whole game plan is out the window. He was up against, he one time bum rushed Izzy and he got him up against the cage. And he, he backed up so quickly versus being locked in an engaging like situation and grappling with him. Instead of like holding Izzy against the cage and trying to do anything, which you would think would be to cost his advantage because he is, you know, more of a grappler he backed off so quickly and went right back to the middle of the cage. And that to me just showed that he didn't really think he could compete on that level with, with, with that assignment. I, I don't think it, you know, like a word you use that I kind of disagree with is scared. I don't think anybody who gets into that cage is technically scared. I get what you're saying, but I don't know if he was scared of Izzy. I think what he was scared of was his cardio failing him. He was scared of himself because if you believe in your cardio and you believe that you could keep that pace for that amount of time, he would have engaged. Grappling with someone inside a cage for an MMA fight, the most tiring thing is, and I know because that's what I do. I put people up against the cage. I keep trying to take them down. And when they come up to their feet, I got to take them down again. If you're not, my best fights were the fights where my cardio didn't come into fact. My worst fights was when I was gassed out. I don't think other than the, for the majority of my career, I don't think I lost a first round because that's when I had the best cardio, you know, early in the fight. I think I probably lost every one of my later rounds in my career. Yeah. I mean, this will be the last thing I say on this so we can move on to the next fight, but. Considering it was such an ass kicking, I have, and I gotta hate being this guy. I hate being this guy that sits there and says a champion or anybody who wins a fight should be humble or should be classy. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. I di didn't really agree with some of the stuff he did after the fight. Um, I don't really know who was mad at him <laughs> because I think most people, from a fan point of view, wanted Adesanya to win. Um, I think he was the good guy versus Costas the bad guy, but. You know, who are, sometimes people need a motivation. And I know there was a lot of shit talk back and forth and kind of made it personal between these two guys. Um, but one, I don't know. I, I, I just didn't really think something that Adesanya should have done with the whole riding him and, you know, kind of being – like continuing the shit talk. He did it like after he got his hand raised and, you know, went over to Costa and did the whole good sportsmanship. But – and I don't think everybody has to be a good sportsmanship. This is MMA. This is a fight. You don't have to be friends. But that, and then I think it's funny that Costa then turned around, obviously at a distance on Instagram, uh, then went on to pretend to be upset about everything Israel did after the fight and won a rematch. I mean, if he had had that much aggression that he had after the fight, during the fight, it might have been a more entertaining fight. But I don't know. You guys have anything to say about that before we move on to the co-main? Uh, I mean, man, that's that's how that's how Izzy is, man. Like he 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 talks always after after every fight. I mean, I get you, man. Hey, some people want to be humble, but then it's like, um, it's like one of those things where it's like sometimes like I see it, I get it, but then like if Conor McGregor did that, people would be like, oh, that was awesome. You know, yeah, no, I, I don't want to make that a race conversation because no, I know no, I'm, 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 I'm it's it said a lot in other sports too, like yeah. football or football, or basketball, especially with mostly black athletes. Yeah, they, they want no, you to be no, humble. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I mean, I was, I wasn't trying to take that. I was just trying to say, like, but I'm just saying, like, if, like, I'm saying, like, if anybody else did it, I'm just saying anybody else, it would have been like, but if Conor McGregor did that, people are like, oh, that, that's cool. It's just to me, I think it's just, man, just that's how I, I want to say it's like. That's how people probably see McGregor as. So it's like if he does it, it's like, oh, that's just Connor being Connor. But if you see anybody else doing it, like, like, like for instance, like, like if be. Kobe did that, like say if Kobe did that, that would have brought him more, more heat, more hate. But, yeah. but you would know, like, oh, that you know, that's Kobe Covington doing that. You know, I mean, and I'm, Kobe, like, got, Kobe got a little uh, bad publicity from what he treated after Connor. I mean, yeah, yeah, it it does happen, but I do unfortunately feel like black athletes get get. Yeah kind of uh vilified for it more than white athletes but. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna make it i'm gonna make it quick my opinion on this i think he went overboard i think uh after you knock a guy win a fight by tko like that humping him 
like that. And then, and then what bothered me the most too, I don't care what the cornerman said to you. You don't go after the cornerman either. I mean, yeah. if you're, if your cornerman wants to go out, what, what, what is Costas cornerman going to do? Like, you yeah. know, and I, uh, I think that, that I get it. There's bad blood. And I, I'm all for shit talking. I'm the number one shit talking. I come from a basketball background. Like we spoke about the last one. I'm talking shit the whole time. I'm okay with that. But like the whole humping him, after he's on the floor, after he got knocked, I hate that when guys knock somebody out. And they like, like stand over them, like you know, yeah. and the shit. After that, like after the fight, if you want to say something like, "Oh, he had a big mouth," blah blah blah, but not like literally in the moment inside the cage. That's what bothered me because the guy's literally on the floor, like you know, trying to get up. So yeah, I don't know what "act like a champion" really means sometimes, but I mean that's kind of apropos here. Like act like you've been there before, you know, act act a little bit more professional. But you know, there was a lot of bad blood. Uh, Adesanya doesn't do it every fight, so you know. But we'll move on. Uh, co-main event was arguably way more exciting than the, the main event, even though it only lasted two rounds. Um, I I honestly I think last week I said that if it went any kind of distance, Reyes was in trouble. Um, Blagovitz would definitely keep the pressure on, keep coming, keep coming. And Reyes would run out of steam, kind of like how he did against Jones. I didn't expect that to be the second round. Uh, Sergio, what do you think of that fight? I think uh, myself and uh, Dominic took Jan lightly. I think me as a fan, uh, as somebody who just watches the fights, and I think Dominic came in with the, that I already won mentality. And I think that's the most dangerous thing you can do in a fight. It's not basketball. It's not baseball. You're not, you know, hitting the ball. You're not shooting the ball. It's a fist fight. Anyone can win on any given night. I don't care how good you are or how bad the other guy is. All it takes is one punch. Um, and I think Dominic came in with that attitude, like, oh, you know what? This is my belt. I beat John Jones in his head. You know, I'm going to take this guy out right away. And I think that's what hurt him. I, I don't think he respected John. And I don't think the media respected John. I don't think a lot of fans respected John. And it showed in the odds. The odds were heavily favored for Dominic. And I think uh, solely more on his performance versus John Jones. But styles make fights. You know, you might have a, an amazing fight versus somebody and then fight somebody else and look completely different. And I think because of Dominic's performance versus John Jones, people held that, held him to such a high standard. And no one was looking at what Jan was doing, myself included. I'd be the first one to say, I didn't think he had a shot at winning that fight. I thought Dominic was going to smoke him. And uh, a fight's a fight, and that's what happened. Brandon? Yeah, man, I got I to gotta apologize, man. Last week, I thought I thought Dom was going to be too much athlete for him, but Jan did his thing, man, Polish power. You know, like, I don't want to take anything from Jan, man. Jan did what he was supposed to do. He fought well. You know, it's like Sergio, it's like Sergio was saying, like, you know, when Jan first came to the UFC, man, his record was not that good. It was like he would win a fight, lose two, win another fight. I think he was what he went one and four in the UFC, if I'm not mistaken. I first mean, that's five. what I said at the beginning last week. I was just like, if you, I told you a couple years ago, I didn't think much of him. Yeah. And then but he just, like, just like his fighting style, he just keeps coming forward. Yeah, but then, but then, like I said, I think what happened too is like, like I, I know I brought this up last week, and I talked about coaching. You know, having having a good team around you, and I think that's what happened with Jan. I think Jan, Jan had left. Went to like a big gym, tried to have all these coaches. It wasn't working. So then what he did was he got it small. He went back to like his old coach, old training partners. And that's when he started to get on his role. Now with Dom, I was noticing it because like I said, I was watching, you know, the countdown show and everything like that. Like he was just with his brothers. It was his brother that was in his corner. That, yeah, that Dom, was, Dom went back to his old training camp too, having Alex yeah, as that, his coach. That, but I'm saying like that wasn't the same people that he had when he fought John Jones. Nope. You know, so that's what I'm saying. It's like, well, why did you make, why did you make the change? Like, like, did you thought something bad happened? You just said, Hey, I'm just going to go with some family. And like saying, man, Hey, sometimes family, family can, can, can push you. And sometimes family can just be a bunch of yes men. I don't know what's going on in their camp. Well, and in fairness, that's the same family that pushed him to the top to begin yeah. with. Yeah. So, so, I mean, I mean, I just, I'm just saying, I just don't know. So like, that's what I'm just saying. Like, why, 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 why did you make the change? But like I said, all, all props to Jan. He did his thing. He came out. He's now your new light heavyweight champion. And he even called out John Jones. He still wants to fight John Jones. So we'll, props get to that. we'll get to that in a second. But I will say this on it. I think he did exactly what I said he was going to do. He kept moving forward. Reyes would get in a few shots in the first round. And Jan didn't back up at all. He did not back up at all. He kept coming forward, putting Reyes on his heels. 
And that's one thing John Jones did do against Reyes. He was counterpunching him. He was trying to feel him out in the first few rounds, and Reyes was able to get off. Reyes was able to go. And Reyes couldn't go against Jan because Jan just kept coming right at him. And by the second round, and a broken nose later, and I'll be shocked if that nose isn't broken. And he's in doing some kind of surgery this week. Um, yeah, you're a new champion. Uh, Blagowitz, just from the get-go, kept moving forward. I thought the age might be a factor. I mean, Dom has, what, seven years, eight years younger than, uh, than Jan. But, you know, some people, you know, look at Randy Couture, you look at some of these guys, they're just built to last. And he might have a little bit of run in him. Who knows? I mean, both the middleweight and the light heavyweight division aren't heavily stacked with too many contenders. I think, obviously, Santos, Texera, and a couple of these other guys are in line at 205. I like but, Santos, man. Santos with that Yeah, that we talked fight. about that last week. I think we all yeah. like Tiago. Um, but, yeah, I think calling out John Jones, I think that was interesting, John Jones' response, because John kind of almost seemed open to it, which made me makes me think that his negotiations with Dana for heavyweight aren't going the way he wants them to. So he might jump back in just to kind of like, you know, when DC took his belt and he wasn't really active, he might want to get it back. But I, I just don't, I don't see him doing, I think he's just kind of posturing right now. I don't really see Jones going to 205 to face, face, face Jan. I just don't see it. That's too much of a risk for him, man. He, there's not much of a reward. You beat Jan, everyone goes like, you're supposed to beat him. Jan beats him, man. That's huge for Jan in his career, you know? So I John's think. Uh, if he loses to Jan. Yeah, that's a bad look for him. So, and, and it can happen. But I, if I'm him, I'm going up to heavyweight, getting paid. I'm fighting a big name. All right. Uh, you got anything else to Brandon, Brandon before we move on? No, nah, man, I'm good. All right. So, this is a fight I actually been wanting to talk about. I think there's a brand new star in the UFC. Uh, I think his name is Brandon Royval. Um, I saw Brandon fight his last fight, and he wasn't impressed with the way he fought, but I think most of us were. And now with a full camp and ready to go, you know, like he said, he didn't have to work his nine to five, his job anymore. He could just focus on training, and you could see it. Everybody from Michael Chandler on Twitter and some other people, everybody was heavily favoring Kara France. And I will say real quick, shout out to DraftKings. Please sponsor the show one day. But um, if it wasn't for the fact that Costa lost, I would have had a perfect uh, card on that, uh, that fight. Um, and one of the big keys I picked was Brandon Royval. Like, I had no doubt in my mind this kid was going to come in and just, just take it. And I don't think I realized who he was going into the fight card based on his name. But once I saw his face, I was like, light bulb went off. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that kid fighting. and. It may have gone to the second round, but, man, that was just a back and forth. And every time Kara France did anything from, like, knocking Royval down for a second, Royval came right back with a spinning back elbow and cracked him. Like, the kid just keeps moving forward. It just keeps coming, 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 um, which is going to probably lead to a lot of knockouts or him getting spectacularly knocked out one day. But right now, I think they might have a new star on their hands. What do you guys think? Sergio? Uh, shameless plug real quick. My Fight Cave uh, podcast, I picked Brandon Royval to win. Uh, we do a lot of the bettings, uh, uh, odds, and I was very big on uh, him as an underdog. I mean, he was plus 200, I believe, or plus 205, and not a lot of people believed in him. I, I Not so much for his talent. I mean, I don't want to take away from his win. That was a great win. But I think that the UFC is very big on Cal France. I think they're trying to build that market out there more. And I think Cara France is a good fighter. I don't think he's the star that they make him out to be, which is why I had Roy Val to win that fight. Um, I'm not really uh, impressed with Cara France. And Roy Val is a good fighter. He's a really great fighter. He's definitely a guy who can compete in that division. Um, so I, I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't shocked. I was more shocked that he was an underdog. I thought he should have been favored in that fight. It was a really first, fun, entertaining first round. He got dropped through some spinning attacks. Um, you know, it's a lot of fun fights to make with him in that division. The kid is good. It's tough walking for moving forward. I think he's Mexican, right? He's got that tough. Uh, he's American. I don't know what his original. Yeah, I don't know why I think that, but um, he's a uh, he's very good pressure fighter, and he's exciting. You know, he throws every 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 one of his strikes to finish it. See that the flyweight division to have that kind of knockout power is something you don't see every day. So uh, I was I was impressed, but not surprised with his performance. Brandon, I mean, you should have been in love with that fight. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, nah, man. It was like I said, man, dude. That was a uh, fight of the night. You know, man. People, pe- people, people like to bash on the flyweights, but when you really watch, man, flyweights, they know they know how to entertain. They they do some good fights. Like I said, man. Like 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 Sergio was saying, man. Like I said, uh, Kerry France, man. The UFC loves that guy. They're trying to build him up as as the next star at 125. I'm kind of with Sergio. I'm not really too high on him. Like you know, I've seen his fights. You know, he he's good. He's talented. But you know, I just think that there are some other people who could really give him trouble. And he definitely met somebody on Saturday that that did give him trouble, man. Like they both had good, they both had good, good striking, good uh, combinations. You know, like you said, man, you hit, hit that hit that spinning elbow, you know, on him, which which was which was good because it was basically like he got rocked. You know, he got like he was kind of spinning from from a shot. And yeah. He- it, he just turned that into a spinning elbow like that right there that's some you know that, that that's some thinking on the fly right there you know type uh, uh stuff right there and, and that's his reaction won. yeah you know and then plus two man he finished with with, with, with a, a nice submission you know in the second round you know props to him i'm down i'm down to, i'm down to see him fight somebody he looked, the- he looked real good on the ground like a couple times they had gotten little scrambles yeah like he definitely looked like he was the the more experienced fighter care france is obviously part of that whole at a sign you can't. So, you know, he's being pushed as well as everybody else. But, man, like I said, I think it's going to be a star in Roy Val. Um, look, looking forward to, like I said, his last fight was explosive. This fight was explosive. I'm looking forward to seeing what's next for him. Uh, a couple other main card fights uh, Vieira versus Hubanks. Um, shout out to Ryan Safaro, who was uh, in the corner for Eubanks. Uh, he's one of the guys we've interviewed on Art of MMA before. Um, Ryan, get at us if you want to get back on the show. We'd love to have you. He's always been one of our biggest supporters, so shout out to him. Um, I don't know how much this girl weighed, but it looked like two different weight classes. Vieira, quite honestly, like she made weight, but <laughs> looking at those two on like fighting that night, I swear I thought Vieira was a weight class above you, Banks. Brandy, what do you think? Uh, hey man, it was, it was a good fight. I liked it. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, I was, I was rooting for Sarge, you know, but it just wasn't her night. Um, cause it was one of those things where it's like, man, like I knew like, like Abu Dhabi didn't throw her off because like I said, she had said that she mentioned that she's been there before for, um, uh, jujitsu tournament. So, so she was kind of just, you know, just enjoying being there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of thought she would have done a little bit more with her jujitsu since, I mean, she was on the ground. I think that's what she said she really kind of has been working on. But I mean, it just, it just to me, it just wasn't her night. Uh, you know, props to her opponent, and hopefully we just see uh, Sarge back in there in the, in the future. I mean, Vera is a Brazilian, so she's probably pretty good with jujitsu. So maybe that factored in a little bit. Yeah, I don't know for sure. I've only seen her fight a little bit before. Sergio, what do you think? Yeah, no, you're spot on. She actually is a very high-level black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. She's a um, judo player, very strong judo player. She's very big for that division. Uh, I know her corner. I know Ryan as well. Uh, so I knew both the cornermen going against each other. Uh, fun fact, uh, Vieira's cornerman cornered me against one of Ryan Cafaro's fighter once. So they've cornered against each other in one mm. of my fights. Mm. So that's, a, that's a something. She has. She comes from the Nova Union camp with Jose Aldo and Ambarão. And those guys. So her 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 jujitsu is legit. I think even if the fight, you know, was mostly a grappling match, I think she does have the advantage only because, right? When I I like to tell people that skill always prevails over size, right? If you get a skilled person who knows jujitsu versus someone who doesn't, but they're bigger, I'll take the guy that's skilled, no matter or girl how small they are. Once the size is factored and the skill is pretty much right. They're both in the UFC. They're both high level black belts. I think the bigger person is going to clearly have the advantage. So even if it goes to the ground, I think Sarge wouldn't have a good fight. I think her best chances would have been to knock her out because Vieira got knocked out cold, man, by uh, Adana. Uh, what's what's her name? Uh, Adana that's fighting ne- this week. Yep. Yeah. Fighting Hall- she knocked her out cold with a left hook. So I thought that Sarge could have caught her. But I agree with you. I think the size difference is a huge factor in that fight. I think Sarge was coming up in way because she fought two two weeks ago, maybe before that. Um, Vieira didn't. I think I'm not a big fan of these turnaround fights. I know a lot of fighters like to do them now. I just think sometimes you just need to get home, you know, settle down, have your uh, cheat meals, you know, and uh, coming back and fighting right away a tough fight like that's I'm not a big fan of. So I think something like that will kind of break down a little bit more after kind of COVID kind of calms down because, you know, they're obviously booking these fights four or five weeks at a time. Yeah. Especially Fight Island. 
Um, Vegas maybe is probably a little bit different, but Fight Island, they're flying them over there for like a month at a time. So um, last one, uh, pretty much it went the way you guys kind of thought it would. Dawado, uh, Dawado, I'm sorry, and uh, Tukovic, Tuk, I'm a, I keep butchering his name. Huh. Tukogo, Tukogo, um, split, split decision, but I don't think there's any question. Uh, that would do kind of just definitely push the pace most of that fight. Um, you guys got any thoughts on that one? I mean, I know, my, oh, my, ahead, my, my opinion on it was what I told you, right? The water fought uh, Julio. I think Julio has some really good hands, fast hands. Um, and, you know, he was fast, man, that kid when he fought Julio. So that's what I gauged this fight upon. I know uh, a lot of people – Fast and aggressive. A lot of people – he was the underdog, you know. Um, so a lot of people thought he was going to lose. Like I said, if I know someone personally who fought a guy who's coming up, I like to use that as my gauge. So I, I, I think uh, Julio has some really sharp – you know, he's a Golden Glove champ, really good striking. And I think that the water gave him a lot of uh, – gave him a hard time, man. And uh, to me, that's what I gauged that fight off of. And uh, I was right. I think I uh, picked him to win. Brandon? And like I said, I thought I thought, uh, I thought, thought uh, Hakeem was going to win. He did. I didn't think it was a split decision. I thought I thought he won, you know, handily. Yeah. Uh, like, good striking. Uh, he had some good defense. You know, I really kind of thought he kind of really controlled uh, I, most of I don't the really fight. know where that 28-29 card came from. I thought 30-27, maybe 29-28. I didn't. I don't know where the one judge saw him losing that fight. But. Uh, as far as the prelims, um, we'll talk about Diego in a little bit. Uh, Riddell Silva, back and forth battle. Uh, Riddell took the last couple rounds to kind of steal that one away from Silva. It looked like Silva kind of ran out of steam. Uh, Brandon, what do you think about that fight? Hey, man, Riddell, another, another kickboxer. You know me, I always, I always got to go with the kickboxer. He did his thing, you know. He too, he too trains out of uh, city kickboxing, you know, with uh, with, with Adesanya and them. Yeah, man, he he did he did what he had to do to get the W. Sergio, I think Silva started really strong. I think you just hit the the nail on the head. I think he ran out of steam. I, I believe it was his UFC debut. It's kind of hard to fight a guy. Is, was it his UFC debut? I don't think so. I think he fought once before, maybe twice. All right, well, I think, you know, that's a, definitely a step up in competition for him. And I think you need to pace yourself more when you're fighting a high-level guy like that. I think he had a great first round and just couldn't implement his game plan due to the lack of cardio. And I think, back to what I said about Costa, I think that when you try to make a fight like that, if your cardio is not up to par, you're going to feel it later in the second round and third round. And then, you know, the other guy who's used to that pace and the better cardio, he's going to make you pay for it. Nothing worse than being tired, man, inside of a fight. Yeah, Riddell just seemed to be real steady. He just kept going, kept going, kept Same coming. Same pace the whole way. Yeah, and and, Rid and De Silva had a couple of shots like in the second, third round, but he didn't. He didn't have the same speed and, and power that he had in the first round. So, uh, Diego, we'll talk about it a little bit against Jake Matthews. Um, the fight that kind of pissed off Adesanya that he he definitely went at Dana Dana for afterwards because of the uh, of Klein missing weight, beating his teammate Young. Uh, I think there definitely should be heavier penalties for people missing weight in MMA. I think Adesanya was perfectly right. People are, aren't going to sit there and if they're if especially what was it like three or four pounds, um, they're not going to cut that in a couple hours, no matter how hard they try without basically dehydrating the hell out of themselves. Um, but there should be a more of a penalty than just 30%, maybe 50%. I don't think 80 or 90. I think that's ridiculous. But you know, these guys, a lot of times, and you two know more than anybody you know, have nine to five jobs, have full-time jobs, unless you're a big star. And these fights barely pay for their camps. So it definitely sends a message when you when you do get some of your purse taken away. Um, that said, I don't think weight made a difference when you get kicked and knocked out. But I don't know. What do you guys think of that fight? Um, I mean – Hey man, that knockout was nice. It was a good head kick. Uh, like I said, he missed he he missed he missed by four pounds. So we came in one fifty, one forty six. Uh, but yeah, I mean, like I said, it was it was it was it was a striking fight. You know, um, the man did what he had to do to get the W. I do think uh, there should be some more penalties. Like I, I guess in my head, I'm like, man, it depends on the how much weight you lose. Like if you miss by a pound, then let's do that twenty thirty percent. But if you miss more than that. 
then that's when it's okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give up some of your perks. Cause remember, it's show money and win money. Remember, the first part, like you ask any fighter, man, the first, the first part of the fight is making weight. Like that's the first part. Once that's done, then 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 everything after that, that's that's what we like to say is the fun part. Cause we wanna we wanna get in there. We wanna we, you know, we wanna fight. So to me, to me, if you miss weight, that means that you didn't show up. So that means that I should get some of that, some of that show money. You know, and then also too, like they were talking about too. I think, I think, man, if you if you go in there and you're and you're already down a point, you know, I think I think I think that might I think that might change some things up. Now now with this fight, it wouldn't matter if he was down a point because he got the knockout finish. But if you go to decisions, then that means it might it might, it might be draws out here or people or people they might get the W. But other mm. than that, like you said, without the weight thing, just just the striking, it was it was it was a beautiful head kick. Sergio, what do you think? Listen, man, I don't want to be a hypocrite. Those who know me, who's followed my career, I've had multiple weight issues before I fought. We were, we were going to bring up the towel. Don't worry. <laughs> there was that one. There was other incidents in the past where, you know, I had great camps. Uh, the weight cut was looking great. And then the final couple of pounds just wouldn't come off. With that being said, uh, I agree with what Adesanya said about some of these guys don't care, especially on the regional circuit, right? You're not making a lot of money. If they're going to take, you know, 20% of your purse, you're like, oh, who cares? I just not... You know, if I'm being completely honest here for to all the listeners, you know, could I have pushed maybe a, a pound or two? Yeah, but was I willing to sacrifice how I was going to feel fight night because of a couple hundred bucks? I, Not just fight night, health-wise, period. Listen, We've seen, listen, uh, what, what's his I've, name, um, the Brazilian, um, all those, uh, uh, Burrell, um, Yeah, he almost died. Yeah, I've, I've helped guys make weight before that are in the UFC. I've seen how bad it can get. With that being said, I've also, you know, without naming names, I've had fights where I told them I didn't want to make any, I wasn't going to make the weight anymore. And I've offered my entire purse. So, you know, uh, I think when you're that, if you just really want to fight, I don't think that's going to, like, are you willing to sacrifice? Yeah, right. It, it hurts. You know, you lose, I don't know, 40, 50, 60. Let's say you put the penalty higher. Is that really going to change the guy? Nah, maybe he'll try it maybe a little harder, but that I, I think – Getting the win is more important than making that 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 money. Yeah, I also think with COVID going on right now, it's kind of hard to penalize more because you really don't know what these guys' camps are like. We talked about it a little bit last week with like how just you know just the two of you going into training and classes and you know doing Zoom classes versus personal and you know being able to get in there and get that same level of fitness. It, it, it's hard right now. Um, I don't think Klein has a history of missing weight. I could be wrong. I did look it up, by the way. Sergio De Silva has two fights, two three uh, three fights now total. He uh, won a fight and lost a fight, so now he's like one and two in the UFC. Um, real quick, uh, we had a sub in the uh, Espino sub Hughes. Um, Knight won the decision pretty easily against Kamur, and if Ragamoff lost the decision to Marquez. Do you guys got any thoughts on those last three fights before we move on? Um, just a spin on that. I mean, I think he looked really good for a heavyweight. He's a big wrestler. He took Hughes down pretty easily, finished with that scarf. Oh, that was pretty nice. I know the UFC was big on him. I don't. He was injured, I believe, because he was the one that won the last season of the Ultimate Fighter, and we hadn't seen him in a while. Um, other than that, that was the only fight. I mean, Knight, Knight looked really good, too. Um, other than that, nothing really stood out. Yeah, uh, for me, I just want to just comment on uh, on uh, Espino. Again, man, he did his thing. Again, that's another person. That dude's 39 years old. Look, Appreciate man, UFC his life. Like I said, man, like saying some people, man, age, age is nothing but a number, man. Some people, like I said, they're like wine. They, they get better with the age, and, and, man, he looks sharp. Other than that, that's really all I got to say for the, for the rest of the prelims. All right, guys. Uh, so let's talk about same way as Cowboy last week, unfortunately, two weeks in a row. We have a guy who's been a legend in this sport. He's given his all. And now you're kind of wondering what's next. Uh, I don't think at any point Diego Sanchez was competitive with Jake Matthews. Um, the very beginning, he might have, you know, had a little bit more energy. But once Jake just started picking him apart, it just became a bloody mess. We can obviously get to the Connor stuff and all that other stuff. But first, the fight. Uh, Sergio, what do you think of the fight? And was Diego ever really in it? Nah, Matthews was my uh, pick of the week. I call it savage pick of the week. Uh, if you were going to throw some money down, that was the fight I knew was going to be the most lopsided in the show. I mean, that was a one-sided beating. 
I, I'm not in a position to ever call a guy out and tell him he's, he should be tired because, you know, everyone's a grown adult. They do what they want. They've been fighting. Diego's been fighting as long as I've probably been training. So, you know, um, who am I to, to say he's ready to retire? I think he's got some other issues uh, that are bigger than fighting. You know, I think he could still beat some guys in the division, either 55 if he can make it again or even 70. And um, I don't think the fighting is the issue. I think he has some outside things he needs to take care of. Um, that's just my opinion, speaking on it of, as a fan. And unfortunately, he's always fought demons. But... Yeah. I think, that, I think that's something he needs to take care of. Uh, for me – Diego Sanchez, man, like, it's one of those things, man, it's like, yo, people, like, people are getting on the guy, you know, talking about, oh, man, maybe this might be the end, but when you really look at his record, the dude has won three of his last five fights, three of his last five fights, he's got the W. Now, one of them was, I think he won by DQ, you know, yeah, I mean, he, he, he was getting one, murdered by Pierre. Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a loss. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, but, like, I mean, again, I just go back to, man, who's in your corner, who's your coach? Like, you know, like, my man's out here doing doing some doing some weird, funky things. Like, hey, I'm not going to hate on it if that's what you want to do. You know, if it works for you, it works for you. But the thing's like, are you seeing the results that you want? Are you getting your hand raised, really? You know, or are you or are you barely winning these fights, you know, by by something? Like, in this fight, I mean, if you want to say he was, he was competitive for the first two rounds, you know, you can see that he was, you know, he was just running around at him. But in the third round, he was done. Jake Matthews took over, busting him up. Blood, blood was all over the place. I think Jake kind of started middle of the second round, just kind of started putting his will on it. Yeah. You know, and, but it, it's, it's, again, it's like, man, like, I mean, unless, like, to me, I'm like, man, if you're not like BJ Penn, Chuck Liddell, where it's like, dude, you're getting stopped every fight, like four fights, five fights in a row, then maybe it's like, yo, we need to, you know, we need, we need to maybe take a seat. But again, it's like, he's three out of five. Has he looked bad? Yes. Has he looked good? Sometimes, you know, it's. Well, it, I mean, it, you got you got to kind of look at that three out of five because one of those wins was against Mickey Gall, who, while I think he does still have potential in, in the fight game, kind of like Sage Northcutt, he got he got a little fame real fast because he he beat up CM Punk. Yep. Which you know, no disrespect to CM Punk, he's just not a high level MMA fighter, and Mickey Gall had a lot more training, and ran right through CM Punk, and even though I don't really care what CM Punk thinks. He has me blocked on Twitter, so screw him. But uh-huh. <laughs> but uh, in general, Mickey Gall, I think, does have a future in this sport. Wait, the real question is here, why were you blocked, man? I'm not even sure. Um, <laughs> honestly, I really don't know. He's a little uh, temperamental sometimes, as most people are well aware. He's a little sensitive. But um, And I'm not going to turn this into a bash and CM Punk uh, episode. Uh, he, he's accomplished way more in his life than I've, I have, so – you know, congrats to him. He's been able to try everything he's wanted to do, so more power to him. Uh, but in general, uh, Mickey Gall, I think, has a future, but he definitely – I remember that fight. He didn't really look like he took Diego very seriously. He came in face first, and Diego is still an MMA fighter. He's still a very experienced MMA fighter. You put your chin out there, and you're going to get knocked out, and that's what happened that fight. Piero – I don't think there was any question that he was going to lose that fight if he wasn't DQ'd. 30-26, if that, even yeah. worse. Yeah, it was a nightmare. I don't remember the white fight, the other one he won. Um, and Chisse, I'm sorry, Chesa, basically, Michael Chesa just basically took his time, didn't really try to push the finish. Yep. So, you, we, we can argue, but, you know, the last last year, last year plus, and Diego definitely didn't look like he was in great shape for this fight. No. Um, I don't know how he made weight, honestly. But, you know, that's near here, here nor there. Personally, I, don't, I think maybe it was Sergio said this last week. I'm sorry, Brandon, if it was you. But we were talking about maybe final fights for Cowboy. I know I watch way too much professional wrestling, but this might be a good match to set up for a retirement match. Whoever loses has to, has to retire. Um, I think it'd be a nice classic fight. I think they both go for it. And I don't know. I'd like to see the two of them match up. But I honestly, I know I know we, we can talk about it real quick before we jump into the previews because I know Sergio has to go soon. But we, uh, when you're sitting there talking about, you know, Conor McGregor, who for whatever reason, maybe just because he thought it was an, an easy fight, maybe because he had so much respect for Diego, whatever the case is, 
when you talk about Conor McGregor challenging Diego Sanchez, that's going to be a nightmare. No disrespect, no pun intended. But I don't know. Maybe you guys can tell me different. But I really think the only fight that really makes sense is maybe him and Cowboy, just to see who really gets to ride off on their own terms. I think that's a good fight to make. I agree with you. I think Cowboy's a couple steps ahead of him. I think Cowboy wins that fight, but I think that's that's the kind of fight you make for Diego, and that's the kind of fight you make for Cowboy. Older guys on their way out. Um, you can't match them up with these young, hungry, bigger, stronger fighters. So I agree. I think that's a great fight to make. Yeah, same. Uh, I mean, like, I would I would be down to watch that fight. Uh, like I said, man, like people, people like top 15, you know, Diego, not for them, but may, maybe you can get, Maybe we can get an up and comer, like say, like 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 we said with like Mickey Gall. You know, he he was a young up and comer, but you know, Diego Diego was able to get him. You know, I again, I guess you know, saying it just depends on who he, who he gets matched up with. Like people that are people, like say people that top fifteen, nah. But if you want to see him in a fun fight, you know, you you, you can always find somebody for him. All right, uh, and I don't even know why I'm bringing this up, man code. Connor leaking the DMs. Uh, Any of y'all have a problem with what Connor did, or do you think it was kind of like Connor? Connor's gonna do what Connor wants to do, man. Yeah, that's it, man. He's gonna do. What he <laughs> wants to do. He's gonna do what he's gonna want to do, man. Like, you dude. think anything was wrong with it? I don't think. I don't think Dana said anything bad where I would be upset that he leaked that. I mean, if Dana was saying something disrespectful to, towards someone or something offensive, you know, like. I, I talk to my boys on DMs on different ways or and texts that I would want probably to be out there yeah. to stay private, you know. Um, but there are things that I say that you know if they put out there, I wouldn't care. You know, I, I don't. I don't think there was anything bad. I think he was just showing that he wanted to fight. I think Dana was just trying to keep his promoter edge and control the situation. I think I, I wrote an article a while ago and it never came out, and I wish it had. But it was called Dana White the Promoter, and you know, it's kind of like a lawyer. How do you know they're lying? Their lips are moving. You know, <laughs> Dana, you know, Dana's going to spin it the way Dana wants to spin it, whether it's true or not. Um, kind of Vince McMahon-ish, you know, he's going to do what he wants to do. And he's going to try to promote his business the best way he can. Sometimes at the expense of the fighter. Sometimes he promotes the fighter. Sometimes he buries him. But he's always doing what's best for the UFC. So you got to take it with a grain of salt. All right, let's jump in real quick to the previews. Um, then we can let Sergio run out the door. Real quick, I know, Brandy, you were looking forward to uh, Bellator as a special Thursday event this week. Uh, Paul Daly's fighting. Uh, he's fighting Anderson. Is there any reason to believe – I mean, Anderson's 16-3. and three. I don't know much about him. Uh, I do watch my fair share of Bellator, but I don't – if I've seen Anderson fight, I don't really remember. Um, you guys got any reason to think Paul Daly loses that fight? Uh yeah, I have a lot. Derek Anderson's pretty good. He usually he used to he used to fight at one he used to fight fight fifty five. Lightweight, yeah, yeah. He used to fight at one fifty five. But he's a big dude. I think he's I think he's six three. Yeah, tall, lanky guy, man. Yeah. Tall lanky guy, he has he has, he has good submissions. I mean, if I was him, I probably would just take Paul Daly down and choke him out because we still know that Paul Daly he's not that good on the ground. I mean, like I said, Derek Anderson, he's got the reach, I'm sure. He could he could, he could probably he could probably keep him at bay with his punches and his kicks. So I mean, it can be a interesting fight. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sleep on Anderson. Sergio, I think, uh, I think uh, Brandon touched, made all the points. I think uh, Paul Daly's biggest problem is going to be getting on the inside. Derek Anderson was very big for fifty-five, and I still think he's going to be big for seventy. Um, he's not going to be something Paul Daly hasn't seen. I think it's always going to come down to like what kind of fight that you put on. I think if Derek Anderson tries to keep it on the feet the entire time, I think eventually Daly closes the distance because he's a higher level striker and I think he knocks him out. If Derek Anderson says, you know what, I want to finish this fight, I think he could cho choke out uh, uh, Paul Daly. So it, it, it's going to come down to what Anderson, what kind of fight he fights. Any thoughts on the uh, other fights on the card? Brandon, you were talking about a little bit something earlier. Uh, the only the only other fight I'm looking for is just uh, my girl uh, Danielle Keyholtz, for, uh, for, former kickboxer. Used to watch her back when she was in uh, in uh, Infusion. Big fan of hers. Uh, so I gotta support her. Hopefully uh, she gets the W. Like I said, you know, just keep it standing and uh, and she's, just throw those hands. I mean, her nickname is is Miss Dynamite for a reason. So you know, I'm just I'll be rooting for her. Before we get to the UFC on uh, Saturday. Bellator's been doing this kind of European tour thing right now. Uh, 
any thoughts on their card on Saturday? Gallagher versus Eleanor, Ward versus Manzolo, Crosby versus Leary. Any of those fights kind of stand out for you? I don't know the guy Gallagher's fighting, but I know Bellator's big on trying to promote that kid, so I'm sure it's uh, it should ten, be a pretty ten and one. So yeah. Yeah, relatively easy. And uh, shout out to Ricky Ben there, a local Northeast kid who beat him. That's his one. Gallagher's <laughs> Irish, right? Part yeah. Irish. yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, let's real quick before Sergio runs out the door on us. UFC uh, back on Fight Island this weekend. Holly Holm. Uh, haven't seen her in a while. Fight, fighting out Donna, who's she's been pretty successful lately. Uh, one. Four out of her five. The only loss was a split decision loss to Pennington. So we know what home breaks to the cage. Aldana's going to definitely uh, go toe-to-toe striking style with her. Um, Brandon, it's kind of right up your alley. I know last week you said you were really looking forward to this fight. How do you think it's going to go down? Uh, so I, it's crazy. I was I was actually talking talking to a to a student of mine about this fight yesterday because he's really big on uh, on, on uh, Aldana. Basically, man, she has good boxing. But I was telling her, I was like, yo, Holly Holmes, she's a kickboxer, though. So, I mean, she has kicks and she has punches. Adana just got the hands. If, if Holly Holmes can keep her distance, keep those kicks going, and also, too, Holly Holmes has good movement. You know, she can move around, you know, as well. So, it's all about kind of if, if Adana can get inside and work those hands, it could be, it could be her night. If Holly Holmes can keep her distance, you know, keep those kicks, keep those hands, it's going to be her night. You know me, I'm a homer for Holly Holmes, so – I just think she's going to get her hand raised and, and just do her thing. I mean, Holmes only two losses in the last five fights, basically the last three years. Cyborg and Nunez. That's not, that's not bad losses. You know, if you're looking at college football, which is going on right now, you know, strength of schedule. Holly Holm, those are only two losses in three in three years. That's not bad. Sergio? Ah, man, I'm big on Aldana, too. I agree with uh, Cotino's student. I think Holly Holm does have more tools to win, but I think Aldana really sits on her punches. She has a lot of power for that, for, for a female fighter and a lot of power for uh, that division. I think uh, if you're going to go technique-wise, I think it's kind of like a Costa Adesanya style of fight. I think uh, technique-wise, I would give uh, Holly Holm the slight edge, but I think Aldana is okay with taking – she's like got that Mexican chin, man. She's okay with taking one to give one. She's like, okay, Holm, you can hit me with three – Three pepper me with three light kicks. I'm gonna just come right down the middle. I think Aldana is gonna knock her out, man. Mm. All right, uh, real quick before we go on, any I know Sergio, you gotta go soon, so if you have to hop off. Just yeah, hop I, off got, I gotta run out, guys. Sorry, yeah. I got a meeting coming up. All right, so okay. me and Brandon will finish breaking down his card. Sergio, thank you so much. Thank we'll you, see guys. You back here next week. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Take All care. Right, have a good one, buddy. All right, Brandon, you and me, let's finish breaking down this card, and I'll let you get out of here. Uh, Couple one loss fighters in the co main event, uh, De Castro and Felipe. A um, couple big boys going at it. Any thoughts on that one? Uh, I I want to say, I think I've seen Felipe a few times. Uh, I'm probably thinking that he's the one that's going to take this fight. Uh, I mean, he has a good record. Like I said, you know, he's eight and one. Uh, but so, but, but of course, his opponent kind of has a good record too. You know, he, he only has one loss as well. But I think, I think Carlos is, is going to take this fight. So, experience wise, I, I kind of want to go with Felipe on that one only because while I knew I'd seen Jorgen DeCastro before, I couldn't remember where until just now. Mm-hmm. And so, <clears throat> let me say this I think if DeCastro gets, gets to him early, he can win. Uh, but Castro's only loss was to Greg Hardy. And yep. that was a three-round decision, one of the only fights he fought. He, he definitely looked way smaller than Hardy, at least height-wise and size-wise. Um, but he fought Hardy tougher than anybody and took him the distance, um, really testing Hardy's cardio. I personally don't really know what to expect from Greg Hardy. I'll leave personal opinions out of it from a fight style. He's definitely impressed a little bit, and he's also had some setbacks. So we'll see what the future lays for Greg Hardy. Um, Felipe's last fight was also his first loss, and that was a majority decision loss to Spivak. So I don't know. I, I think Felipe's probably going to take this one, but I, I really think that one could go either way. I think yeah. Ca- Castro has a puncher's chance in that one. Yeah. Uh, one fight I'm actually very curious about, speaking of women, uh, we all know, you know, the up and down story of the Deuteronomy. Uh, I cannot talk today. 
<laughs> so good. Me. Uh, and then also on the other side, the same up and down story with Pena. Uh, at one point, Pena was poised to be the next next big thing in the in the division. Um, her only loss has been to Slavenko, uh, Slavenko, but she has been very inactive. She's only had one fight in the last three years. That was, you know, against Montano. Uh, yeah. She went from being, you know, the next big thing, beating Jessica I, beating Singano. And then she kind of disappeared with um, her personal issues. And now she's back. You know, on one hand, she probably is the underdog in this fight, but it's got to be a very pick em fight. Yeah, I mean, I mean, me personally, like I said, man, and you know me, I'm the kickboxer, so 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 that means that means I got I got to support my fellow kickboxers. Like I said, I'm gonna go with uh, 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 Jermaine on this one. Uh, like I said, man, I think I mean I I think I think her game has 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 uh, has uh, evolved over time. By the way, you took the easy way out taking her first name, but go ahead. <laughs> you know me, man. <laughs> I'm always thinking. But like, but again, like you said, man, like you're saying, Juliana, uh, Juliana Pena, you know what I'm saying? She had, she, I think she had her, her knee surgery. So, I mean, she was all about for that. Uh, also too, I know, I know she, she had, you know, she had a kid. So, I mean, she was out there, you know, taking care of her child and everything like that. But I, I mean, I think it's one of those things where to me, man, if it stays standing, uh, it's all about uh, uh, Jermaine doing her thing. And if it gets to the ground, that's where I think Juliana Pena, you know, she has, she has she has her best chance to win this fight. Yeah, I mean, Jermaine, the same thing as home. You know, her only loss in the last five fights was to Nunez. I mean, everybody's lost to Nunez in the last five fights. Um, she did kind of duck Cyborg. I mean, I don't think there's any question about that. She refused to fight Cyborg, even moved down and wait for a fight. So, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with the future of that. Um, ignore the static in my background, by the way. I do live in Tampa and it is now storming. So <laughs> that that is what you hear in the background. Hopefully that comes out in post edit. But you know, we live in, you know, live and breathe down in down in Florida. Sometimes this happens. Uh next fight on the main card is Phillips versus Else. Um I honestly don't know much about Else. I've seen Phillips fight before. Uh I would think Phillips takes this one. Uh Kyler Phillips. Uh he's definitely uh, very active. Um, he just fought in, in February, um, beating Silva. What do you think about that fight? Um, to be honest with you, I, I, again, I'm like, I don't think, I don't think I've really ever seen uh, Els fight, or, or I just don't remember. But I mean, he's a dude coming out from the UK. Uh, but he's won his Kyle, last five fights, so yeah. But Kyle Phillips, all by finish. I, I, but but Phillips, I, I have heard of because I because I remember his nickname, uh, the Matrix. Uh, like I said, that dude, that dude got skill. Um, so I'm probably like you, man. He might. I, I'm probably gonna be thinking, thinking that he's gonna be taking it. I gotta be honest. Looking, looking at the records right now, and I didn't know this about Cameron else because I'd never heard of him. He never fought in the UFC. His last fight was Fusion FC. Um, he has fought in Brave, so he has fought some competition, uh, and he's fought obviously in the Middle East fighting in Brave. So he's definitely familiar with the territory. He is a Jackson Wink fighter. Yeah, I mean he's he's British, but he is a Jackson Wink fighter so should be interesting actually i kind of kind of now starting to look forward to that fight i didn't really think much of it to begin with thought kyler phillips would probably have an easy fight but and i know this fight being on the main card is definitely to promote phillips but this could definitely be one of those possible upsets to look out for yeah i mean like i say i mean it is it is going to be else's uh ufc debut so you never know he could he he could, he could have the ufc jitters but like i said he come he comes from a good camp so i'm sure he will be well prepared the last fight on the main card, um, kind of going the other way based on the way it's listed. It's heavy, heavy underdog for Townsend. Uh, I don't see any way Dusko loses that fight. Uh, he's won five in a row, all by finish. Um, he, I'm oh, sorry, well, he, he went to the decision in Dana White's Contender Series. But everywhere else he's fought, he's knocked people out. Uh, and Daquan Townsend has three straight losses. Though, in fairness, all three fights are in the UFC against top-level competition. But I think this fight is really to promote the 9-0 uh, Dusko to Darby. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think you're right. Like I said, man, I mean, my man has, uh, Townsend has has, uh, has uh, 11 losses on his record. So, I mean, as we as we like to say, he, know, he, know, he knows how to lose a fight, you know. 
He does um, have 21 wins, so he knows how to win, too. He, he does. He does have 21 wins. Uh, but, like I said, I think you're right. I think it's uh, probably a show. Uh, you know, it's probably, it's probably the spotlight, uh, Dusko. So, I mean, you, you, like I said, you never know. Um, they be fighting at weird times, you know, over there in Abu Dhabi. So, you never know, man, that that, that could have an, 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 uh, an uh, effect on him. So, we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, he's Serbian, so he probably is not that thrown off by it. Yeah. Uh, undercard, we normally don't talk much about the undercard, but there is definitely two fights I really care about. Um, I think maybe you agree with me on this one, Carlos Condit. He's not what he used to be, but anytime he steps in that cage, everybody wants to watch him. Everybody remembers, you know, everything great about the former champ. He's fighting Court McGee, who, much like Condit, has had his ups and downs throughout the last couple of years. Um, maybe going towards the end of his career as well. So this definitely should be a competitive fight. I think on paper, McGee is a minus 130, so kind of a pick em type fight. Con is plus 110. I have a hard time picking this fight only because I'm such a fan of Carlos Condit. Um, being a kickboxer, I'm sure you are too. Um, yep. I, think, I, I don't think Court McGee has really looked that great the last few fights he's fought. So I definitely think Condit can win this one, and maybe he's being set up to win so the UFC can get one or two fights out of him. Um, but in fairness, Court McGee's last two losses have been to Brady and Lima, who are both you know top level people. So um, I don't know. What do you think? I uh, I mean you are, I mean if you guys remember last week when we were talking, Carlos Condit, one one of my guys, like I said, him and Cowboy Cerrone, one of the people that really that really got me hooked on uh, on MMA. You know those those uh, WEC days. To me, I say this is a Carlos Condit fight to lose. To me, he's the better striker. I think he's the better, uh, or, or, or should, should I say, he has he has the better jujitsu. I think Court McGee is a better wrestler where, where he can get the takedown. But Condit, but Condit's good on his back. That's where he get his triangle chokes. He can get his arm bars on Court McGee if Court McGee is sleeping. Um, but to me, this this is a, this is a Carlos Condit fight to to lose. Like I said, I just see him. I just see him picking picking Court, Court McGee apart. You know, standing up. He does have the height. And he has the height and reach, reach advantage over McGee. Yeah, but I, 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 but I just, I just, I just think. I mean, you like, I mean, you always have the height, you can have the reach, but it's do you know how to use it? Like there, there are people who are long and and tall and stuff, and and they they don't they don't know how to use their reach. They don't know how to use their height. You know, but Carlos Condit, I'm telling you, he's just he's just a veteran striker. I I think he pulls this one out. Yeah, he hasn't been in the cage in a couple of years. His last loss kind of broke my heart when he lost to Chisse. Um, that submission. Yeah. He lost to Oliveira via submission, Maya via submission. He did go the distance with Magni. Lost a tough split decision about four years over four years ago to Robbie Lawler. Um, he hasn't been that active over the last you know four years, but you know at one point he did mull retirement and step away for a little while, and then came back, and then he did it again after his last fight. So my only question is how much his heart's in it, how much he really wants to fight. Yeah, because um, Court McGee is a lifer. Court McGee, he's one of those guys who just keep fighting, um, whether he's the most talented guy in the cage or not. Um, and he is very talented. I mean, not disrespect to Court McGee, he's very talented. Um, but I'd like to see Condit take that win. But I think that's more of me being biased than actually thinking he might win. Uh, I'll let you uh, say a couple fights that might stick out to you. One other fight that kind of sticks out to me, always been a big fan of Frey. Um, she's another person. Uh, that we've interviewed on Art of MMA, Jen Frey. Her last fight, I think she was actually winning against Hanson, and then Hanson caught her in a submission, and that was it. And it was a pretty nasty submission. Um, there was nothing Frey could do. She was caught, locked in. Um, I don't know much about the girl she's fighting. Um, look, Boon Me uh, was four and two. So this might be a good fight to get Frey back. Um, she lost her most recent fight to Angela Hill um, earlier this year. So, and I remember, I remember that fight. I guess now that I'm thinking about it with Angela Hill back in February, and it was kind of a back and forth fight. So this could be an interesting fight. How you see it going? Do you have any opinions on it? Uh, this, uh, to be honest with you, this actually too is the um, other fight on the on on this uh card that, that that i'm looking forward to just like you i i actually am i actually am i'm a i'm a fan of, of Frey as well you know i used to watch her back when she was in uh 
Invicta. Uh, my thing is like I was just looking at this. I'm like, yeah, both these both these ladies are actually basically at, um uh, atom weights, so they're both doing 115. So size really really shouldn't be uh, too much of a of a difference for them. Um, I, I, you know, me, like I said, I'm, I kind of think Frey might, might take this one as well. You know, I think she has more tools, uh, than, than her opponent. Um, but her opponent, but her opponent's very talented too. Like I said, you know, she, she has been in Invicta. She's been in the UFC. She actually had two fights in the UFC. So, I mean, she's one in one, you know, but I mean, she has been, uh, she has been in Invicta as well. Uh, so, you know, I just, I'm I'm just gonna go with Frey. I think I think Frey I think Frey's gonna take it. I think I think this could be a bounce a bounce back win for her. You know, like like you know since since, since her last fight in the USC. Frey's got a little bit more reach on her too, so she might give her the same tr- trouble that Angela Hill gave her. We'll see. Yeah. Um, any other fights stand out on the undercard? Uh, nah, man. Like like I said, really just this fight and Carlos Condit. They're they're, they're the really the only two fights that, that I'm really like looking forward to on the uh, prelims. There's definitely a lot of up and coming fighters. Um, Jordan's ten and three. Um, his opponent is eight and one. Uh, Williams and Imavov, they're both nine and three and eight and two. So there's comp- competitive matchups on this card. Looking up and down it, um, Kenny's pretty heavily favored over Healy. Uh, Vander Romney and Irie. That's I think on paper they have it a little closer than maybe it is record wise. Um yeah. Ron Minnie is eight and one. Uh his opponent's six sixteen and five. But I will say sixteen and five, but a four inch height advantage and a little bit of reach advantage. So kind of balance that one out. And definitely I think some of these uh fight cards have outdone the pay per views lately. And I yeah. think this is another one that people might sleep on because of the female main event. Uh that might actually be a very entertaining fight card for people on Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, uh, just going back to another fight, uh, I mean, you mentioned it, but I would say for people who might not know it, might not know it, more people on the undercard, but Casey, Casey Kenny is, is a good fighter. I mean, his last fight, he beat, he beat Smoker. He, he caught him, he caught him up with that submission. Also too, he has a win over, over, um, uh, Ray Borg as well. So, I mean, he definitely, he definitely is somebody to uh, look he's, out, look he's out pretty for. heavily favored too. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, I I could I could definitely see him winning this fight, and he could it, it could it could be another it could be another uh, showcase victory for him. It also could be a case of people not know know much about uh, Haile because he's Chinese, um, but he just got a split decision over Benoit, and he's also got he's got two wins now in the UFC. So yeah, could be another sleeper fight as well. Um, we've seen some betters lose quite a bit of money lately in the UFC, so. I always think it's funny when some when you see some of these headlines like this person put fifty thousand dollars on this fighter and then the fighter loses. I'm like, eh, kind of get what you get what you get with that when you try to pick somebody so heavily favored. Um, but that will do it. Anything else you want to add this week, Brandon? Anything else you want to talk about? Anything coming up that you're interested in that we haven't talked about already? Not nah, uh, just to go back uh, on the on the belt on the Bellator card that uh, that's happening also as well on Saturday on the on the Gallagher fight. Uh, there's the a European card. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a woman on there fighting too as well. That guy that got my eye on. She was on. She was on the uh, last uh, Ultimate Fighter for the women's. Uh, I think her name is uh, Catherine Leher. I think that's how you say it. Uh, I mean, she's just she just she just somebody to look out for. I know she did some training. I think at uh, Jackson Winks when she was here in the states for a bit, but I think she's back home in, in Germany training there. So just so 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 that's just somebody else for you guys to keep your eye out for. Awesome. Uh, yeah, she's fighting a girl who's eighteen or who's eight and one. So. Yeah. Definitely be an interesting fight. Veteran versus probably an up and comer. Bellator has a lot of these great fights sometimes with with some of these veterans kind of being the gatekeepers of some of these up and coming fighters, seeing if they can they have what it takes or not. So uh anything else, Brandon? You good? Nope, that's it. Man, thanks once again for uh joining us. Uh people at home, like I said in the beginning of the show, take a second, two clicks, like, subscribe. It does a lot for the show. It lets us know that you're watching. It lets us know that you care. Uh, from Sergio, Brandon, and I, thank you so much. We'll see you next week.